Warrant's classic track, Down Boys. Let's learn this. The first thing that you need to know is that we're tuned down half a step if you want to play along to the album and this lesson. So from low to high, we're E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. Okay, so just be sure to tune down to play along. Um, oh, and I've got this new pick today. Actually, the very first time I've ever used it, this Ernie Ball Prodigy. Don't know if you can see that, but we'll be giving it a try today. And so far, it's... Uh, not quite as comfortable as my regular picks, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Okay, so the intro of Down Boys is a little bit strange, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways of approaching this, um, because there is definitely more than one way of looking at this. Uh, I'll show you how the official tab approaches it, um, and I'll also show you what makes maybe a little more sense to me. Um, but if any of it gets confusing, you know, if either method gets confusing, just throw the one out that doesn't work for you and use the other one. Cause ultimately it doesn't matter, right? It's just a different way of looking at exactly the same thing. So try not to get too bogged down by the theory behind it all, but you know, I have to do my job as a teacher and show you these different ways of looking at it, uh, to hopefully something really clicks and works for you. So let's start with what the guitar is playing. First of all, we've got two guitars in the intro, that intro part that fades in. That's you hear this. <laughs> Right. Okay. So that the more prominent guitar that's played by Joey Allen live is in five, four. Now also bear in mind that may, makes this song a little bit difficult to figure out too, is because they never actually duplicate this the way it is on the album live. They get close and you can tell that it's the same song, but it's not the way it is on the album. They've definitely simplified it and made it easy for themselves. Um, but on the album, that guitar part that's played by Joey Allen live is in five, four. And then the underlying guitar part, there's a second guitar that's mixed a little bit lower. It's not quite as prominent, so the ear gravitates towards the 5-4 part. But that second guitar that's layered in there is doing this 6-4 pattern. Right, okay. So we've got those two going. One guitar is in 5-4, one's in 6-4, and it creates a really polyrhythmic effect. And because the song fades in, we don't even hear a starting point. It's really pretty much impossible to pinpoint, okay, where is the start of this, uh, this riff, right? Like what would be beat one and how would we count it? So because of that, we have a different, couple of different ways of looking at this. Now let's talk about the official tab. So let's cover these notes here first and I'll put the tab up the way the official tab has approached this and we'll cover that first. Um, so what we're gonna do is start on the ninth fret of the D string, come up to the ninth fret of the B string, and then 11 on G, 10 on B, down to nine on E. And we can just put a palm mute on all of that, right? So we have those five notes. And just count that as straight eighth notes. One and two and three and four and five and. And we can do that four times. That's one, two, three, Okay, and on the fourth time, we're gonna come up to that 10th fret on the B string and only hit that once and come down and get into our next riff. Okay, now that's where the problem kind of lies. This is where we can get a different way of looking at this because the, where the official tab has placed beat one on the ninth fret of the D string, that means that we have a measure of four, four, as you can see in the tab for that fourth measure. One and two and three and four and a one and a two and then we're going to get into that next riff in four four time okay so let's cover that next riff so that we can play the whole thing together we've got this d power chord fifth fret of the a string just drop your first finger back one fret so we have four and seven and that's an a over c sharp okay and then a b and an a power chord okay so we have this Now we're going to take that A power chord and relocate it to the fifth fret of the low string. So same power chord, but just relocating because we want to be able to drop our first finger down a half of a step, just like we did up here on the A string. So we're going to play that A power chord on the fifth fret of the low string. 
drop your first finger, back to A, up a whole step to B, okay? Put that all together. Okay, now as you can see in the tab, because we switched to 4-4 four, four time, we have to tack in a measure of 2-4 there at the end of that riff to make it all work out. And a one, and a two, three, and a four, and a one, two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, one. All right, and then we're into our next riff, but we've had to throw in that measure of two, four to keep it, um, you know, working out fine. Um, now, that's one way of looking at it. And now if you're in a tribute band or a cover band and you really are trying to nail this part live, then you'll just, you can follow my tab and for that second guitar part uh, and you know it, it'll work out fine where the two guitars meet up to, and it will sound just like the album um, and if you wanted to you know cycle for more cycles than just the four measures then you just have to kind of work backwards and figure out where that guitar part should start but it's just um, that second guitar part is an E power chord um, up on the top three strings the ninth fret of the G string and the 12th frets on B and E and we're just hitting each note three times. So start on the G string, hit that three times up to the B string, up to the E string, and back to the B string. And like I said, that's just in six, four, right? One and two and three and four and five and six and. So that's, uh, it can be confusing. I'm sure that that's one of the reasons why they don't duplicate this live is because, you know, they'd have to be really thinking through that part and it would be, uh, you know, more of a struggle than just having fun and rocking out on stage. So uh, it'll take a little bit of work for you to figure out those two guitar parts, playing them consistently live, but it can be done. Um, now that's the official tab. Like I said, let's talk about a different way. And if you're happy with that, skip on over to the next chapter because we're just going to cover the same material here, but a different way of looking at it. Um, but what I'm proposing is that we can count this whole intro in 5-4 and we don't have to flip time signatures at all. If we just move beat one back a beat and start these same five notes just on the ninth fret of the E string, okay, we have these same five notes just starting in a different place. But if we started on that ninth fret of the G string, we'd have that one and two and three and four and five and... Now we can play that four times. Here we go on the fourth time. And then we jump down. Okay, and that works out. We're gonna stay in five four, right? That last time would still be five four. One and two and three and four and five and a one and a two, three and a four and a five. One and a two and a three and a four and a five. And then we're into our next riff. But we can look at all of that as five four. Now one other thing too, live the drummer counts them in he counts a four count, right? So I would argue that he's actually counting on two, three, four, five in, rather than actually counting on a one, two, three, four. It makes more sense to me. But anyways, there you have it. That's the intro. It can be complicated because of that polyrhythmic stuff going on, but uh, I'm sure you have enough information there to absolutely nail that. Let's get into the uh, next riff that we hear that goes like this. Okay, so this is a really fun riff um, and it's really quite easy, but you know, crank up the volume and you'll have fun with this one. It's a nice 80s, takes you right back to the 80s. What we're doing is we're starting chugging on the E, on the low E, and then that A over C sharp, and then three more E chugs, and then to a D. So just bring that first finger up. And then two more chugs, and then A power chord. Okay, so we've got. Now we go on the A string, two, hammer to four, back to two, and then bend the third fret on the low string a little bit. Okay, so our first two measures. Now we repeat. And then we just do a little chromatic movement from on the A string, four, five, and six with a power chord. Okay, so that's our riff. Here it is nice and slow.
Okay, now we repeat this riff uh, and we just have to change the ending. So we repeat. Now at this point, instead of doing our chromatic movement, we take the bar and dip it twice with that A power chord. And now guitar one comes up and does a dyad hitting the 10th fret on B and the 9th fret on G. And then dip the bar with a slide and we're gonna get into our verse. And the second guitar does the same thing. But then just hits a harmonic on the fifth fret of the G string. Dive the bar. And then we're into our verse at that point. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll just play guitar one through really nice and slow, the whole thing starting from the five, four bit for you. And then we'll move on to the verse. Thanks for watching this Warrant Down Boys guitar lesson. If you're really digging this lesson and want to see more of your favorite tracks with complete and accurate tab right on the screen, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I try to make these videos as complete and accurate as possible so that you don't have to watch 20 videos trying to piece the song together. So feel free to maybe drop me a comment letting me know what else you might like to see in these videos because I'm always trying to make them better so that you can learn even easier. And also drop a suggestion or two of what song you'd like to learn in the comments. Let's get back to it. And then we get into our verse riff, which sounds like this. So the first half of the verse riff starts off really similar to what we had a second ago in the intro riff. We're gonna start off with four E palm mutes. Then we're gonna hit the fourth fret on the A string, but try to give it a pinch harmonic and a good vibrato. Okay, two more E palm mutes, move up to the fifth fret. Again, try to give it a pinch harmonic and a good vibrato. So we've got this. Okay, now one more E palm mute and an A power chord. Then we do our little run on the end, two to four to two on that A string, down to the third fret on the E string. Okay, so the first half of that verse riff, nice and slow. Okay, and then in the second half of the verse riff, we get into arpeggiating power chords for the most part. Um, our root movement is gonna follow E, B, A, and C sharp. And that A is the only one that's not strictly a power chord arpeggio, as you'll see in a second. So we start off by arpeggiating the E power chord, and then the B, come to the A. There's an open G string in that one, however, so that's not strictly an A power chord. And then up to C sharp. Okay, so I'll quickly play through that, and then we'll break it right down for those of you that might be unfamiliar with those power chords. Okay, so breaking that right down, we start with our E power chord. So start, hit open E. Now two and two on the A and the D string. Now we come back to the second fret on the A string because that starts our B power chord. And then go four and four on the D and the G. Okay, so those two power chords together. Okay, now we hit our open A. Second fret on D and open G. And that takes care of our A portion. Slide into the fourth fret of A, that C sharp, and then six and six on D and G. Okay. Putting all those together. So 
So that's the way that I've decided to play the verse and the way that I've decided to show it to you. Um, however, I did want to make mention of this A power chord. When I go to the A, I'm hitting that open G. And there is some discrepancy there. I've seen some tabs where they're just strictly arpeggiating an A power chord. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I've chosen to use the open G because there is a couple of rotations on the album that sounds like the open G, as well as I have found live footage. Um, and maybe I'll put a couple of links there for you if you're really curious. I'll put the most obvious ones uh, where you can really hear that open G popping out. So due to the fact that I've heard them play it live with the open G, as well as there's a couple of rotations in that in the album where the open G sticks out, I've decided just to go with the open G. But you know, on the album, it is mixed kind of low. It's hard to hear that one note. Sometimes it sounds like the A, sometimes it could be the G, but because definitely I've heard it live, I've went with that open G. But you could play that verse rotation, uh, just arpeggiating the A power chord on the second frets on the D and the G, right? So. Okay, just see the difference there when we hit that A as opposed to, right? There is a little bit of a difference there. Both work, both sound great, but I just thought I'd bring it to your attention that there is a discrepancy there, but I believe it's the open G. Okay, and that is the verse riff. It plays four times. The only thing to note uh, that this C sharp power chord that we arpeggiate at the end changes slightly almost every time. Like the first time you can get a, a good pinch harmonic on that final note. Okay, the second time that it plays, they do a little hammer from four to six on the D string, so it's like this. Okay, so the I'll just arpeggiate all that quick for you so you see that in context. Okay, and then some other times, you know, you'll have to listen and use your ear just to get it exactly right every single time if you wanted to nail it. You know, sometimes they'll just arpeggiate it without a pinch harmonic on it. Um, you know, so just fiddle around with it. Um, really listen if you want to get it exactly right, but those are the little variations that you're going to come across. And that, like I said, then that just plays four times for verse one. And the other verses are the same, like verse two comes in and it's actually just this riff. <laughs> It, it just uses the riff that we had in the intro uh, underneath verse two. And then verse three goes back to the way we just learned verse one with the arpeggiated power chord sequence. Um, and then that takes care of all of our verses for the tune. The next thing that we have to talk about is the pre-chorus and the chorus. So I'll just play the pre-chorus and chorus together and then we'll break that down. <laughs> So let's talk about the pre-chorus first. The pre-chorus is a four measure uh, chord progression. Um, and we'll talk about the way it is on the album first and then I'll quickly show you what Joey Allen plays live because he's been playing it live differently than it is on the album for a very long time. Um, but on the album, we start off with this big G power chord. It's just a G chord, but we'll lift our first finger and deaden the A string so that we're just getting a big G power chord across all six strings. And then we're gonna jump up. In measure two, we jump up to this dyad, the eighth fret on the B string and the seventh fret on the G string. And we're gonna put a palm mute on that, hit it three times, and then drop down to the, the seventh frets on the G and the B. Okay, now we're gonna hit that twice more. Pull off to an open G string. Hit a C power chord, okay? And then we hit a harmonic on the fifth fret of the G string and dip the bar 
and you know just give it a little whack to get that scoopy sound on beat four um and then that happens on the end of two one two and three four okay and then we're just going to go up to a d power chord on measure four and and that rhythm is just one and two and a three and four and then we get into our chorus okay so the pre-chorus nice and slow Okay, so that's the pre-chorus the way it is on the album. And once again, you'll hear little variations from pre-chorus to pre-chorus. You know, use your ear and just play what you hear if you're really trying to nail it, if you're playing in a cover band or something. Uh, but like, for instance, in pre-chorus two, you'll hear that harmonic on the fifth fret of the G string come in uh, at the end of the first measure, actually. Uh, in pre-chorus one, it came in in measure three, but in pre-chorus two, you'll hear that right on the end of four, four, and, and then, they kind of dip the bar on the beat throughout me uh, measure two. So, you know, you'll hear little slight variations like that. But for all intents and purposes, the pre-chorus is the same every time they play that. Um, oh, yeah, there is one other little thing uh, that's a little bit more um, in, uh, integral to the song. At the end of pre-chorus two, you have this dual guitar effect. Um, so it goes like this. And then we're into our chorus. So just that measure that we're playing on D changes significantly. Um, if you listen, you, we've got this. Two hits on that D power chord coming out of the left channel. Then we've got this. So it's sliding from an E to a D with just palm mute the two bottom strings with one hit. Um, and then back to both guitars playing at the two more D power chords at the same time. So we have left channel right channel, both channels, right? Put that together. And then we're into our chorus. And pre-chorus three, there's a slight difference too. Uh, they've added a fifth measure. They actually hang on D for two measures, for measures four and five. So it's a five measure pre-chorus. So uh, there's a couple of other differences too, like, like that harmonic doesn't even come into play on pre-chorus three, and they kind of arpeggiate these chords. So if you wanna nail that pre-chorus the way it is on the album, you kinda of wanna arpeggiate down the top three strings of each one of these chords, so that G, we're going down strings one, two, and three. And then we go to the D, but we don't actually have, it's not a D chord, we don't play that high string. We only hear strings two, three, and four. Okay, so again, arpeggiate down string two, three, and four. Go to a C power chord and arpeggiate strings three, four, and five, the G, D, and A. Okay, go down like that. And then we're on our, to our two measures of D. And all that is is a D stab with two E palm mutes in between. And just keep that pattern going for the two measures. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Just three hits on that D power chord at the end. So that pre-chorus nice and slow for you goes like this. And the final thing that we have to talk about in the pre-chorus is how Joey Allen is playing this live. Um, and he started doing this way back in, you know, 1990, shortly after the song was released. I've seen live footage and he was playing it like this back then. So he didn't stick with the album version very long. Um, and he started doing like these dyads down the two high strings. I'll just quickly play it for you and then I'll show you exactly what it is. <laughs> Okay, so for the first measure, he's starting on the 8th fret of B and the 7th fret of E. 
and we hit that three times. You can put a palm mute on this. You can kind of play with the palm mute, take it on and off here and there, but we're going to hit that three times. And then we're going to come down to seven on B, five on E and hit that three times. And then twice on the fifth fret of B and the third fret of E. Okay. And we're going to do that the exact same thing for measure two. And the measure three, we do the exact same thing, but move everything down a whole step. So we're starting on the sixth fret of B and the fifth fret of E. Okay, so hit that three times. And then five and three, and three and one. So we have this. Okay, uh, and then he just jumps up to the D the same as it was on the album for measure four. So now that we broke that down, the live version nice and slow. And that's really all we have to talk about the pre-choruses. Um, and then the choruses are nice and simple, just a lot of big ripping power chords. We're gonna start off with E power chord, hit that twice, up to a B power chord, and then hit the A power chord twice, right? And then hit that A power chord even one more time on the upbeat of beat two. And then we're gonna repeat E, B, A, jump up to a C sharp. And then we're gonna continue up chromatically uh, five, five, six, seven, after we hit that C sharp. And then we're gonna go back to E, B, A, up to C sharp. Stay on that C sharp. Open E to F sharp on the second fret of the low string. Then F sharp, open E, two hits on B, open A, A power chord. Okay, so that last sequence. And then we have a random slide on the final beat of the chorus. Just use a, any finger that feels comfortable, do a random slide up the, a couple of bottom strings. So there's the whole chorus for you, broken down. Uh, now uh, I'll just play it nice and slow through once for you, and then we'll move on. So that's how you play the choruses. And the next thing that we have to talk about is the rhythm underneath the solo. Uh, however, there is a little tag to get into the solo section out of chorus two. So I'm just gonna quickly play you the very tail end of chorus two with that little tag into the solo and then the rhythm underneath the solo. So here's how that sounds. Okay, as you can see, the uh, chorus ends the same. Okay, now here's our little tag and it's just revisiting the intro riff that we had. Okay, so all that is we start on our D power chord, fifth fret of A, drop your first finger to that A over C sharp, and then B and A power chords. Okay, and when we hit that A, Right there, we're gonna just palm mute a measure of eighth notes on A. One and two and three and four and, right? And then we're going to hit a harmonic on the seventh fret of the G string. And you want to dip the bar quite a long ways. And then on beat three, we start bringing it back up and try to stop it. If you wanna get it right how it is on the album, then it's there's like a dead stop. Uh, of that guitar on beat four, right? So it's like. And then we get into the rhythm underneath the solo. And that rhythm is just the same uh, 
that we learned in the intro of the song and we've been playing a large portion of this riff to underneath in the verses. So uh, we just play this riff one complete time. Play it again the second time. Right, but the second time just stop it dead stop on that D uh, and wait two beats and then we're going to do quarter note triplets here uh, to get into our next verse. So that's just starting on the fourth fret of the A string and chromatically walking up which means that we just start uh, beat one of that next verse with an E power chord on the seventh fret. Right? And away we go through that verse the same way as we talked about in the verse chapter of this video. So that is pretty much all the rhythm to the tune. We just have to quickly talk about the outro and then we'll go back and tackle the solo. And the outro is already mostly elements of what we've talked about. So the basic underlying harmony guitar or rhythm guitar in the outro is uh, playing essentially what we just played underneath the solo. So we come out of the final chorus. And then we get into our riff. And when around we go again. Stop on the D just like we did in the solo and then. So do your little chromatic move from four, five, six, slide down. And then you hear that polyrhythm figure come in from the intro, right? That five, four bit comes in. And then that kind of pans over to the second guitar part that's doing that six, four figure. And then that fades out and there's the track. Now that is the basic rhythm guitar, what's going on underneath there. However, there is another one layered in there in that outro and is mixed really low. So uh, it's hard to make out every note. I'm not claiming that I've got this 100%, but I did all the tricks, you know, pan left and right and slowed it down. And I think I have this very close for you. Um, so I'll play you a quick performance through of that uh, overdubbed guitar we'll call it and then i'll break it completely down for you Okay, so we'll break this guitar part up into four little mini phrases, two bars a piece. The first one is the exact same as what we learned in the first verse. Uh, nothing new here. We've got pinch harmonics on the fourth and fifth fret of the A string. Okay, nothing new there. And now the second uh, little mini phrase uh, of two bars is going to have a pinch harmonic on the seventh fret of D and the ninth fret of G. And then what we're going to do is hit an open A along with the seventh fret of the D string. So two A's an octave apart. Dip the bar a little bit and then into our chromatic movement on four, five, six. Okay, so that one, just because it's a little more complicated, I'll just give it a quick play nice and slow for you. Okay, now the third mini phrase again has pinch harmonics on the seventh and ninth frets of D and G. And that last note is on the 11th of G and we don't give it a pinch. On the album it's just that note slid down and then add that on the end. Okay, and now our last uh, little mini phrase here is we've got tapped harmonics. So what we do is chug that E four times. Now what we're gonna do is put your, or fret the ninth fret on the high string, and we wanna tap an octave higher. So we're gonna tap right on the fret wire of the 21st fret. 
Okay, get that nice harmonic sound from it. Then put your second finger down on the 10th fret and we're gonna move up our tapping finger one half step as well to the 22nd and hit that twice. And then we're gonna come down to the 10th fret on the B string. Just move your tapping finger obviously down to the B string 22nd fret. Okay, so we have four tap notes. And then we pick the ninth fret on the high string again, hammer to 10, back to nine. Okay, so nice and slow. Okay, so that final phrase all together goes like this. Okay, so as near as I can tell, that's the way it was performed on the album. And I have seen them perform it different ways live. I've never seen them do those tapped harmonics the way I think that it is on the album, but I have seen different ways. Um, one of the most notable is using the whammy bar to kind of get the melody. And I saw Joey Allen perform this once. Um, and he frets, he, he's doing this on the B string, fret the ninth fret on B, and then use the bar to bring it up a half step. Right, there's the phrase. So we're gonna hit that ninth fret on B and use the bar to raise it a half step and back down. Come down to the ninth fret on G. Then come up to the 10th fret on B and use the bar to raise it a whole step and release. Right, put it together. And there you go. You could use that as a method of creating a cool outro without tapping those harmonics. Um, and if you watch enough live footage, I'm sure that you can uh, see other things that they've been doing to make that pretty cool too and easier to play. So there is the entire rhythm track and all that we have to do is tackle the solo. So I'll give you a quick playthrough of that and we'll break it down. <laughs> Okay, so the solo is pretty short, has some melody, some flash, and a lot of bar work, so you'll want to keep your bar handy. And actually, we start off using that. What we want to do is bend the 19th fret on the high string up one and a half steps, and then give it a little shake, a little vibrato with the whammy bar at the top. Okay, that's how he gets that nice vibrato on the album, by using his bar there. Uh, and then we go 19, 18, 17. And then we fall down to 15. Okay, so we have this. And from there, we get a little triplets. Okay, so we, once you hit that 15th fret, you go 17, 16, 15 on the B string, and then 16, 14 on G. And then we're gonna actually hit the 15th fret, bend it up a half a step. And on the album, you hardly even hear that bend. And you wanna get a nice pinch harmonic on it. So you bend it that half step, give it a little vibrato, okay? So that whole phrase together goes like this. Okay, and then we come down and we hit the 12th fret on G and the 14th fret on D, a nice bluesy lick there. Okay, and that concludes our first phrase. Now, uh, let's just play that whole first phrase for you nice and slow. And then we get into a really cool lick that kind of climbs up the top two strings. It goes like this. Okay, so we start on the 15th fret of B, bend that up a whole step, and then 12 on B, and 14 to 12 pull off on G. Do a string skip up to the 14th fret of the high string, and just bend that a half a step, and then 12 on the high string, and 15 to 12 pull off. Okay, so so far we have this. And now, end it with a 15th fret bend on the high string. And it's got a cool little choke sound, right? Like you wanna chop it off at its highest point, just dead in the string. And then we have a little slide there. So that little lick. Okay, now the next thing is this. Okay, so we bend the 17th fret on the high string up twice and choke it off uh, kind of staccato both times. And then we come to 15, back to 17, 
and then back to 15 and bend it a little quarter step. Then down to 17 on B, 16 on G, 17, 16, 15 on B. And shake it with the bar. So that whole little thing. Okay, now we repeat our 19th fret, one and a half step bend with a little vibrato with the bar. And we repeat again that little blues lick that we had in the very first uh, little bit of the solo. We're just up an octave higher. So we have the 15th fret on the high string and the 17th fret on B. Okay. Now we want to lower the bar and as we raise the bar, we slide into the 15th fret on the high string and then we have a little rapid fire pentatonic pull off lick. So we slide into that 15th fret and then we're going to pull off to 12, hammer to 15, back to 12. So it's kind of 15, 12, 15, 12. Then we come down to the B string and do the same thing. 15, 12, 15, 12. And then end it with a 14 to 12 pull off on G. And again, he uses the bar for a little dramatic effect at the end of that uh, phrase. So um, the whole little thing, starting from that one and a half step bend. Okay, now we get into this sliding fourths type lick. Okay, and we start with a couple of dead strings, just muted strumming there, a down up. And then we get into this steady kind of stream of 16th notes. We bar the 15th frets on the two high strings and slide up to the 17th. Hit those 17th twice more and then come back down to 15. So it's, and then down to 12. Okay, and then we have to hit those 12s a couple more times. Bar the 14th frets on B and G and end just with the 12th fret on the G string. Okay, so that whole thing nice and slow. Okay, now at that point when I hit that, I use my pinky to flick my selector switch down so that I can hop down and get that harmonic that we have to hit and it rings nice and clear. So it's uh, basically the fourth fret. I find it by laying my finger right over the fourth fret and then just moving it back just a little bit. Okay, so then you wanna hit that harmonic. Might have to search around just a little bit on your guitar. And then I raise my bar up about a whole step just by leaning back on it. You could have the bar, you know, so that you're, you've got it in this position and raise it, that works. Um, and then you wanna jump back up to 19, 20, and 22 on the B string. And then finish the solo with a 22, uh, the 22nd fret on the high string. And give it a little vibrato and fade it out. Okay, so the last little bit of that solo, I'll take it from the sliding fourths bit so that you can see me flick the selector and all of that again. So uh, here that is the last little bit of the solo. And there is the solo. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know any song suggestions that you have in the comments. Um, and let me know if there's any licks or riffs with this song that you're still having trouble with because uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I'm putting together a new series. I wanna tackle and really get in deep to any specific licks that people are still having troubles with. And we'll start talking about the theory behind the licks and get right into picking patterns, anything that you might need to know about mechanics to really nail these licks. Um, so yeah, let me know what you're having trouble with so that we can really do a deep dive into it and get it figured out for you. I'm um, looking forward to hearing from you. Looking forward to doing the next video. I'll see you in the next one.